Sterling Mudlock, he played 80 games for Australia between 2000 and 2009 and played in two World Cups. And of course, there was that intercept semi-final try in 03. Welcome to the show, mate. Oh, thanks for having me, mate. Look, it's an unusual situation for us All Black fans where the Wallabies and Wallaby fans are going to be feeling a hell of a lot happier right now as we head into week two of a World Cup than us All Blacks. Yeah, but I, think, I don't think you can draw too much into it. The reality is, Australia, we're very, very lucky. We've got a, a, a pretty, a, a relatively easy pull compared to a number of others. And in particular, you know, that match, the opening match uh, of this World Cup was probably going to be the best match of the whole entire pool match, pool stages. So, and it was the intensity and everything about it, it, it certainly lived up to that. Um, it was a phenomenal game, great performance by the French. And unfortunately, yeah, um, that screenshot of, of the pool, the pool A, um, Currently on four and against, I think New Zealand are sitting fourth. It's been doing the rounds on a lot of WhatsApp groups that I'm in. Um, But I'm sure it'll change pretty damn quick. Sterling, that's part of the problem, though. And, you know, we've selected, uh, you know, changed 10 players for this game against Namibia. Part of the All Blacks' problem is between now and that quarterfinal is trying to be battle-hardened and prepare against three opponents that, you know, no disrespect to them, but they're all opponents that the All Blacks should give a right todger to. Yeah, it is. It is a challenge, um, uh, and I think you know. Obviously, out, out of the, the remaining matches that are, that are in place for, for the ABs, it's you know Italy will be a, be a test, but it, it won't be a significant test as as what it, what the quarterfinals more than likely will be. So, um, all, all I can go to is, is I guess from my experience being in the World Cups that that either way. Um, you've got to go into those sudden death matches with a lot of confidence in your systems and processes and that you are battle hardened. Now, if you are playing, I guess, a team that that is, is, is considered a minnow, you've got to put them to the sword no matter what. And and actually what you want to do is make sure you don't um, lose lose your, your attacking structures and just try to score up every 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 break and whatnot. And it's very hard to, to not do that. Sometimes once you start getting up, you start getting throwing passes you shouldn't pass and 50 50 balls and everything like that so it's actually very challenging to make sure that you take confidence out of those games and you do put them to the sword but you also play the style of footy that you want to play when it comes to sudden death how easy is is it or not or otherwise to divorce what has happened within the last weeks or months and i'm going back to 2003 where the all blacks put 50 points on south africa at pretoria put 50 on you guys in sydney but you came out in that semi-final, and look, our 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 perception of this was that you hadn't played, you know, your your kind of top rugby for at least a year, if not longer than that. But you were able to put all of that aside, go into that game toe to toe it, and thoroughly deserved the win. Outplayed us that day. So I'm just going back to your mental state and the uh, preparation of your side and the self belief that you would have had to ignore what had happened and just play that game. Yeah, I actually think it's it's relatively easy. Um, the only difference from my point of view is that. Probably your opponents and your opposition, a they have a blueprint of what they've seen has worked to 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 uh, to defeat you, and b probably their confidence is higher. That's the only difference. Whereas internally, and certainly you know in elite sport and, and in rugby, you know you learn pretty quickly. You've got to compartmentalise. You you've got to take the good with the bad and review as hard as possible and move on and and, and work on straight away the next day at training, right? And, and find the solutions and. You know, when it comes to another month from now, when we go into the, the sudden death uh, stages, or, or a little bit less than that, um, that loss, I'm sure, will be well and truly behind the AB's uh, psyche. And, and, and to be honest, it's so far away that hopefully, you know, it's, 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 got, it's got no scars at all. Um, and that's for me why it's really, really important for them to absolutely put teams to the sword for the, for the remaining three matches in, in this pool. Sterling, more like Wallaby Legend is with us heading off to France yourself in uh, a sh- very short while. So Australia, 0-5 under Eddie Jones this year. Then you win that game against Georgia. Now you've got a game against Fiji. And what I'm getting to here is, again, that momentum thing. You go out there, you play well against Fiji, and you beat them, and all of a sudden you've almost got one foot in the quarters yourself. At that stage it becomes who turns up on the day. Am I reading this right? Yeah, I mean, it's a huge match for Australia. And it's actually a huge, huge match for Fiji. I thought they were actually hard done by. Yes. It was an amazing yes. game. Uh, well, I was in Fiji. And in particular, uh, to Fiji to get to get a man binned, carded, I think that really um, took a lot of momentum out of the, and wind out of their sails. 
And even at the very end, uh, you know, unfortunately, it looked like they were more than likely going to score and there was that drop, drop ball on the, on the left wing there. So uh, it was an amazing game, one that they'll be absolutely uh, stinging from and, and want to absolutely give everything they can to, to knock off the Wallabies. So I think it's going to be certainly a massive game uh, for, for both teams. Um, again, I, I think that the, the way that Wales played and certainly the way that Australia will be more than likely taking this game is it will be a territory-dominated style of, style of game and, and really focusing on set-piece and trying to pigeonhole the flying Fiji, Fijians because from unstructured possession and, and when they get an opportunity to show their wares, geez, they are unbelievable. They are so good with the ball in hand and unstructured play, they're just phenomenal. Um, so I think it's going to be an awesome game. One that I'm not, you know, categorically confident, but but I think if if we do do that, we focus on set piece and really pin them down on, on, in their half from a ter- territorial based game. Uh, hopefully, we can get the money. You had Eddie Jones as your coach in 2003. 20 years later, what is different about him, and and can he lead you further than you did in that in that tournament in 03, which is obviously to win the tournament. Yeah, look, I, I was really lucky to have played under Eddie for more than half of my career. I think it was eight seasons. So, um, you know, I had a, had a great respect for Eddie, for him as a coach. And probably one of the greatest, he's one of his greatest attributes is his constant desire to improve every single day. And and he hasn't stopped that. And, and, and I think that um, his style of coaching, um, his work ethic will never change, but certainly his style that he's coached on the different teams that he's coached has, has changed dramatically. Uh, when we were playing at the Brumbies early days and then in the Wallabies, we actually played a really, really highly structured game. Um, fast forward to this time around with the Wallabies, this iteration has been undoing a huge amount of the structure that, that this team um, plays with. In particular, the reason for that is because defensive systems and structures and patterns are so good. If you take, if you find any opportunity, in that phase, you've got to take it. Um, that's just where the modern game is at. On top of that, kicking and attacking, kicking and even kick passes are a huge part of the game nowadays as well. You know, I think back to back to early 2000s and even the H3 final, uh, we only did some tactical kicking when, when we knew it was on. Uh, we like to have be more ball in, ball in hand, in particular that semi-final that you mentioned against New Zealand. A huge part of our focus was attack ball in hand um, from any any territory, or any territory, pretty much, which which was which is part of our tactics to take them out of the comfort zone. So, if I think about Eddie now, to come to Eddie then, um, he's adapted his coaching and evolved his coaching dramatically to try to get um, his his chance, uh, his, the team, the best chance to win. Very different as well the team that he's got because they are really really young, really really young, um, extremely fit, and, and will probably throw caution to the wind. Finally then, you've got to touch base with two World Cups in 03 when Carlos threw it and you caught it. Did you hear anything? Did you hear the crowd? What happened? Did it go silent for you? I mean, you sped off like a rocket. <laughs> um, it, yeah, it's a moment that uh, I get asked about a lot. I know, and, yeah. And, and, and a lot of my mates talk, get rib into me as well because I was wearing gloves. So I can I can never live that, that down that um, one Brilliant. of my, my most famous um, things events that I, that I was part of in rugby. Firstly, I was wearing gloves. Secondly, it was an intercept. Um, I didn't used to like intercepts back in the day because it often meant if you took a lot of intercepts, it meant you, you weren't a very good defender. Um, but that was my first intercept at that time, at that level, certainly. Um, and as soon as I took it, all I thought about, oh my God, Joe Rockathoko mm, and Dougie mm. Hallett are going to catch me from behind and I'm going to look like an absolute goose. Um, the, the, the stadium was, the, the noise was immense. And I just kept on focusing on my, on my cadence and my tempo um, and got back to the 22, did one look back and realised those two speedsters were not going to catch me and then I was pretty excited. And then in 2007, and this is the dichotomy of sport, isn't it? That losing quarterfinal to England against you know, an English side that is, you were a better team than then. You had that late penalty which could have put you ahead. And this is sport, isn't it, mate? You have your highs, you have your lows. Oh, absolutely. Um, it, it was it was one that it was, it was a long long distance penalty, and actually that's probably that's come to the fore already in this World Cup. The, the kickers are kicking from well and truly over 50, 50 meters out. On that day, it was over the halfway. I, I very rarely took um, goal kicks from that that distance. If 
but I knew I had it in me. And, and um, when I hit it, I actually thought it was, I, I thought it was going over, but it just, I had a bit more hook than, than normal. And it went probably almost just over a little bit to the left of the left upright, uh, left post, I should say. So, um, yeah, look, it, it, it's one that I didn't get. Um, you know, I was very lucky that a lot of times as a kicker, I learned the hard way. There was a few times where I didn't kick goals, but there was a lot of other times where I was in that situation where I did nail it. But um, to miss that in a semi final, sorry, in a quarter final, and that was that was a diff- difference. Was really, really, uh, you know, I was a pretty, pretty angry man for a few days. Put it that way. We thank you so much for your time, your thoughts, mate. Absolutely brilliant. All the very best. No pleasure. Thanks, man.